Welcome to the channel. Today we are down in the south side of Tokyo, close to where I live. Uh, we're in Setagayaku, uh, Futaku Tamagawa area, and uh, we are at J Oto. Let me turn the camera around so you can see. Uh, this is a very famous shop in Tokyo. It's been around since 96, so uh, 26 years. And the, they are specialists of basically any old Mercedes that you would want to collect these days. Uh, they deal on it, so you know. 500Es, E500s, E60s, the 190 Cosworths, uh, and even the old station wagons here, the E320s. So basically these guys collect uh, an insane amount of stock. They select the cars that, you know, look the best and are looked after well. And of course, they offer maintenance. Uh, the workshop is across the street. We'll go and take a look uh, after the, the main shop here in a second. The cool thing about this shop is that I actually remember uh, when it first opened because uh, I was actually in high school uh, just behind here in the mid 90s. So uh, I remember seeing the shop and I remember seeing all these cool cars, which at the time were new, being modified and tuned and, you know, getting fitted with uh, nice suspension and, uh, and wheels. And, and, it's, and it's been here ever since. It's, it's kind of like an institution in Tokyo if you're into Mercedes. So uh, let's uh, go inside, take a look. So right here in the middle of the shop, they have this beautiful uh, 500E, so W124 chassis. And uh, what makes these cars super special is that uh, back in the early to mid 90s when they were being built, it was actually a collaboration between uh, Porsche and Mercedes. So uh, uh, the chassis were actually uh, sent from Mercedes to a factory that Porsche had in Zuffenhausen to, uh, to get built. And then they were shipped back to Mercedes where they were painted and then sent back to Porsche to get uh, the modified five liter V8 dumped into them. So that's why they're called, or often referred to as the cars that were developed or built by Porsche. Uh, and of course, being in Japan, you always end up seeing lots of uh, upgrades. So this one in particular is running what look like uh, Brembo F50 calipers, four pots. Uh, big 18 inch wheels and the rest has been kind of left as it was always kind of from factory very fresh there's another one here on more old school wheels the crazy thing is that these cars continue to uh, be very sought after by collectors uh, you see quite a lot of them being uh, used and you know they show up at Daikoku meetings and uh, uh, often at like uh, car shows, so they're sought after. They were built like tanks, which is probably why they're uh, kind of like a, a car that people want because they know they're just gonna run forever. Uh, and this is kind of a more of the run of the mill 320, but very much the old school Mercedes interior, wood paneling. This has got 143,000 kilometers in this particular car. And the amount of spares that are on display in the shop are just insane. Like these are the kind of things, you know, having owned the 964 for years now, I know exactly how difficult it is to find parts and especially how expensive it is to order from Germany, the legit stuff. Luckily for Porsche, there's a lot of like sub brands, which kind of do a really good job of recreating you know, trim pieces and parts and stuff like that. So there is a choice, but as with any uh, collector car, old car, it gets expensive pretty quick. Cool old AMG rims. Look at all the Bosch and Hella parts. Lots of electrics, uh, speakers, bulbs, lights, relays. Hey, they even have an attack. Mask. We were there last uh, last weekend. Tons of uh, trim parts, steering wheels, seats—you name it, they have it. 
it's incredible and check out this really cool old g wagon it's a shorty which you actually see quite a lot in japan japan is a massive country for for g wagons it's, they're so popular this is a 280 ge this will probably be from i guess uh early to mid 80s plastic grill very much the spartan kind of military approach here that <laughs> you really see how the g wagon was originally developed and designed love the seats you have a 190 here but it's a special one this is a 2.6 so not the fully fledged cosworth but definitely something uh kind of away from the norm again we have a ton of like trim pieces this looks like a b-pillar with a seat belt um, adjuster there armrests dashboard covers head gaskets bumpers wheels seats nice selection of steering wheels here this one has a porsche logo so later in the mid 90s onwards the 500e was renamed as e500 so this would be a later, a later version to what this is here. I love the paint on this. It's kind of like a, it's got like a purpley haze on what is a metallic silver. Let's see if we can get a better shot from the front. So cool. And the AMG design wheels. This is a five liter V8, awesome torque. And you can just imagine the, the sound. So most of the 500Es or E500s uh, in the shop sell between uh, 7 to 9 million yen. Uh, they've held uh, a pretty consistent value throughout the years. They're not crazy expensive. Uh, they're not like an E60. Actually, there's one outside which would probably cost about double. This is an E500, so it came uh, 94 and after. And let's take a look inside because these cars were built very 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 well amazing quality materials even after 30 years really thick resistant plastics you know a lot of steel proper thickness in the door so you can really hear it you gotta smack them to close them properly built very well and that's why they've lasted so long okay so this five liter v8 that these cars are powered by originally came from the the original sl the cabrio performance is quite acceptable for for the age i mean early 90s this was putting out about 330 horsepower which kind of gave you about six seconds zero to 60 uh, acceleration which was uh, impressive for a car that weighed what 1700 kilos pretty much a tank at that time definitely f50 calipers and it's on forged five spokes so like pretty much most to uh, shops in tokyo they're always like next to like apartment buildings and houses and then you turn and you boom car shop so we got um two more 500 es one here and there this actually has the uh i guess the optional amg spoiler there's basically an add-on to the trunk and to the side of the fender here just to create that slight lip but this this is something even more special this is the e60 so again it's based on the w124 chassis but it came with a six liter version of the V8 engine, which was rated to about 380 horsepower. God, it looks so good. I think these wheels, these AMG style wheels are far more uh, of a better fit to these cars than anything I've ever seen them fit, fitted with. Well, you know, maybe some Porsche wheels would look pretty cool on these. And again, old school G-Wagon here. It's so nice to see these early ones. This is a 300 GD, so it's a diesel. Got the plaid seats. So good. And there's two cars here that are covered up. I don't think they have anything to do with J Auto, but if I had to guess, that silhouette and fender mirrors, that these uh, old fair ladies. This one definitely looks like a fair lady Z. Yeah, for sure. On Watanabe's. Looks like it's been sitting here for a while. Let's take another look at the E60 from the front. I love these little stubby mirrors. They're so much shorter than the, the original ones that these cars came with. Um, we just crossed the, the street to the workshop side of, uh, of things and uh, 
Looks like they have two cars inside. A Brabus six liter, again, W124. And then another 500E. I was just thinking like how crazy it is that they engineered the hinges on the bonnets to actually click into place at like 45 degrees. And then there's a second option to get them upright like that at 90 degrees for like, you know, when you do proper maintenance. LP110. Uh, Saturdays in Tokyo are always fun because people take their cool cars out. Yeah, GD Impreza. You can get a nice view of J Auto, the main shop. Uh, this is the kind of famous oh, GTR, famous Kampachi Dori. I actually did a story probably like a decade ago now on Speed Hunters where I took my bike and I went for a ride and I kind of stopped at all the cars, uh, shops, and tuners. I'll put some uh, links up here so you guys can go and check that out in more detail. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed seeing uh, this quick stop by J Auto. Um, this is something I really want to do a lot more of on this channel. Uh, basically kind of explore uh, all the little shops that I kind of either know of or kind of find uh, around Tokyo and Japan in general. Um, I think nothing represents uh, the Japanese car culture more than these little shops that you kind of spot everywhere around the, the city or you know Japan in general so uh, again a big thanks to the guys from Jayoto for giving us uh, an hour to shoot here today and uh, until next time I hope you like this episode let us know uh, your kind of feedback on the on the on the comment section I'll make sure to check that out so uh, hope you enjoyed it